So today we're doing butternut squash soup. Hi guys, welcome back to Vlogmas. If you're new here then, welcome. We're so happy to have you here. My name is Belen and I am a first time mom to a baby girl that is one year old now and her name is Micaela. So before you miss on any new videos, make sure that you click on the subscribe button and on the bell so you can notify whenever we upload a new video. So you may be wondering what are we doing today and I am going to show you how I do my butternut squash soup. It is super easy, so if you haven't done it before, trust me, if I can do it, you guys can do it too. So I know a lot of people don't eat butternut squash. I think it's because they don't know how to cook it or cut it. And I can understand why, because it looks intimidating to me. But I'm here to tell you that it's super easy to cut and to cook. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And I'm gonna show you what I used to make the soup. So let's get right into it. So all you need is a knife, a spoon, and a potato peeler. You could probably do the whole thing with just the knife, but I'm just being fancy. So the first thing I do, I just cut the ends off. So, and it is going to be hard, okay? Probably not as hard as like sweet potato, but it's going to be hard. And then you just cut it in pieces. So however you want to do it, because you're going to cut it into little squares anyway. So after that, it's just so much easier if you use the potato peeler. So you just peel it like a potato. I have a little bag here. So this is what I was saying that you could use the knife to do this, but I find it so much easier to do it with a potato peeler. So you could do it either way. The biggest part is the hardest to peel. After you're done peeling it, all I'm going to do is cut it in half. And that's where the seeds are. Ooh, that's where the seeds are. And what we're going to do is scrape them out with the spoon. And you can also roast the seeds if you want in your oven. I've done it before. Um, but I really don't have the time now, but I know a lot of people do. So you can use the whole butternut squash if you wanted to, including the seeds. All right, so Micaela has joined us. So after we remove the seeds, all we do is cut it into little squares and we're gonna put it in the blender. Now, you do not have to go get this blender. This is the Instant uh, Ace Nova blender and it cooks and it blends all in one place. So, which is amazing. I, I use this all the time to make baby food for her, um, but you don't have to have this. So, or you don't have to get it. No, Micaela. Um, so yeah, so you do not need this. You can just use a regular pot with boiling water and just cook it there. So that's how I do it. I know some people bake them and then they blend it. Either way is fine. No, Mika. No, Mika, hay que cocinarlo primero. Hay que cocinarlo y después lo podemos comer. So I was saying that um, you can either boil it or bake it. And then after it is soft, so so you can use a uh, fork to test to see if it's to see if it's uh, soft, and then you remove it and you put it in the blender. So it's basically the same, but I am going to do everything in one place. This is gonna boil it first, and then it's gonna blend it. So let's get cutting. No, a la boca no gordita. Eso se usa para escribir aquí. Acá, ¿ves? Ahí se escribe, pero no es para la boca. So yeah, you can also use this to make baby food. It's super easy and uh, Michaela loves butternut squash as well. So when you're cutting, it doesn't have to be perfect. So if you're going to boil it in a regular pot with water, uh, you don't have to cut the pieces so small. I am only doing it this way because I am going to put it in this blender and it's going to cook a lot faster if I cut the pieces smaller. So, but I, that is the only reason why I'm doing it. And again, they don't have to be perfect. I mean, you're gonna blend it at the end anyway. But if you are interested on the blender, it is uh, from the Instant Pot brand. And I got it at Target. And it is called the Instant, I said Ace Nova. I have, I think they have like three different versions of it, but um, I don't know, that's the one they have, so 
I didn't do much research for this. I just knew that it was going to be so much easier to make baby food with it. That's why we got it. And you can do all sorts of soups in there. I love that you can just put whatever veggie you want in there and um, just raw and it'll cook it for you and then blend it. It's just perfect, especially when you have kids and you don't have time to be <clears throat> going back and forth from the kitchen and checking on food that's in the oven. So this does it all together for you. And then at the end, it turns off by itself. And then at the end, it turns off by itself. Micaela, Micaela, eso no se come todavía. So this blender, when it's done, it turns off by itself and then it has a function to keep warm. Just like the, if you have the, um, the pressure cooker from the Instant Pot, it's just like that. So you can put uh, keep warm and it keeps your soup warm or whatever food you have in there warm. And I also do uh, applesauce in there from scratch. So all I do is I peel the apples and I put them in there with a little bit of water. The blender boils it and then um, it blends it and it's so easy and delicious and Miquela uh, loves it. Yeah, so this is gonna take longer to cook. So I'm probably gonna have to do it twice. So I'll do, I'll show you in a minute, but I'm gonna have to run the cycle twice. Okay, so the instruction says you have to put a minimum of half a cup of water, but I'm probably gonna need more than that. So I just eyeball it to be honest with you. If, I mean, you don't want it that runny, but you don't want it super thick either. So we're just gonna go with that and you can always add water, but you can't remove, so don't put that much. So I'm just gonna put some salt. You can always add salt at the end too. Just a little bit of pepper, not too much because I know Michaela is going to eat some. A little bit of garlic. And again, you can always add this stuff at the end if you uh, feel like it needs more. So at the end when you're done tasting it, and then some oregano leaves. And then olive oil, or uh, I'm gonna add butter at the end anyway a little bit, so just a little bit. Also, you can put whatever you want, just you can make it your own. So I know some people that add some cinnamon, they add cheese, they can add, um, I've seen it where they put a little bit of sour cream on top of the soup when you're about to serve it and it's really good. So you can try all of that, but you can play with it and see what you like better. So just a little tip, if you are doing baby food with this, uh, don't put a lot of water because then it'll be super runny and super hard to feed your baby. So you want it thicker when you make baby food. So I would suggest putting very little water and then just add gradually as needed. All right, so let me show you what I do. I usually go to soup and they have two settings. So if you want it a little bit chunkier, and then the second setting is like um, a lot more smooth. So it blends it a lot more. So I do the second setting. So I do number two for soup. And then that's it. I just click start. And then you can see um, the temperature as it rises. And it will boil and cook and blend in between. I think it blends just a little bit to move the food around uh, every, once every minute, I think it is. But yeah, that is it. It is super easy to use. And like I said, I'm probably gonna have to do it twice. So once it's done, I'll just go ahead and do it again. And as you saw, it says 16 minutes. So we'll just do it twice and we'll be eating in a little bit over 30 minutes. So it's already at 212 degrees. And as you can see, it's boiling. And that is the blend that I told you about that it goes off every like minute or so just to move things around. All right guys, so 16 minutes went by and it is done already. So I'm gonna open it and see if we need to cook it for another cycle. So we'll see. It looks and it smells amazing. And I end up cutting the other piece as well. So I'm probably gonna cook it after I remove this from here. But yeah, it only took me 16 minutes. So, and I don't think we have to cook it again. I mean, it looks pretty good. All right, so after the soup is done, this is the time where you can add some milk, you can add uh, heavy cream, butter. Uh, you can, like I said, I seen it where people put uh, a spoonful of sour cream on top of it. And it was really good as well. You can also put a little bit of shredded uh, mozzarella cheese on top and let it melt and mix it all together. But either way you do it, it is going to be delicious. So the other thing that I wanted to add is that you can get as fancy as you want with this soup. You can add onions, you can add garlic, you can add anything you want to it really. But I also wanted to show you that you can also do it super simple and all you need is butternut squash, water, salt, 
and those are the main ingredients i mean the rest you can add if you want but the butternut squash has so much flavor already that you don't have to add a lot and i know that some recipes there are kind of intimidating you look at them and they have so many ingredients and you're like well one i don't know if i'm gonna like it and two i don't have all those ingredients and i don't want to go shop for all of these ingredients just for one recipe so yes you can do it super simple and the other way that you can also do it if you don't want to make it in a soup you can just cut the butternut squash when it's whole into like slices and put it in the oven and that's all you have to do a little bit of salt pepper on top of it and it is good to go but it's really good and it has a lot of health benefits so you should try it if you never had a butternut squash before especially because this is the season for it all right so the soup turned out really good so all i did was add a little bit of butter and some salt and that was it but look at this guys i have soup for the rest of the year <laughs> that is a lot of soup so it's super simple and easy to make so i say give it a try and go make some you won't be disappointed all right guys but that is it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed my super simple butternut squash recipe also don't forget to give this video a thumbs up comment down below and subscribe to my channel it really helps my channel grow i truly appreciate every single subscriber and thanks again for watching and i will see you again tomorrow bye guys